one. Come on, man. Come on, man. Whoa. You definitely got her horns. <laughs> I don't want to be a blooper. <laughs> Thought we'd give you the walk around. We've got the goats to sort. And then I've got to go out and feed the sheep. But goats is the main problem because we might be do a vet visit today if we can't sort something. That's Samson there. So he's going to come out, he's going to go back on his holiday. He can go back into the barn and have a bit of respite from the girls. And then the next job will be to walk the lambs down from the far, far field. And they can all go in. You can see that where they were tucked, they've got the green mark on the back. Just in case that rubbed off, we transferred a little green dot to the back of the neck. So once we've made sure that all of the ewes have got a green dot, we know we're going to be easily able to identify them then we'll mix in the lambs. And then very soon in the next probably two weeks, we need to get a scanner in to get all these girls scanned to see what the numbers are like. Um, hopefully most of these are gonna be twins, but it wouldn't be that bad if a couple of the um, shillings had singles and then fingers crossed not too many triplets. Although I think one, if not two of these did three last year. And they manage fine. And for those of you who are new to the channel, we keep two breeds of sheep, which we probably shouldn't have done in our first year. We've got South Downs, which are these guys. This is the the ram. And then I think we've got ten ewes. And then the Clins, which are these. Well, I kind of call them vanilla sheep because they just look like a typical sheep. But they're great. They're really easy to look after. Great mums. Um, we have 11 of those and then Samson's the big ram for those guys. So I'm not sure if we're going to carry on with two next year, especially as we're growing the goat herd. Um, if I was going to replace anything, I think I'd replace the South Downs. I love the look of them. They're really nice, small, compact and quite a chunky um, kind of meat quality carcass. I just think if we were only going to keep one breed, I'd probably go for the Clin. Um, they seem to have had less issues over the year. Not that we've had anything too serious, but just foot problems and things, like, and even getting caught in the brambles. I just noticed that it always seems to be the South Downs that are getting in trouble. So these guys are just a little bit more, I don't know, easy going, I guess. And they seem a lot friendlier. The South Downs are, I mean, as far as sheep go, both of these breeds are pretty, pretty easy going. Maggie, leave her alone. It's always this one, 375 she is. They always end up playing. So this is Samson. He's a, he's a big lad, but he has softened now. Remember when we got him back in November, he was, well, he was permanent beast mode. We would, didn't really want to go near him. Now he's settled down a bit. Also, he's done his fair share of getting around the girls. So he's a little bit less testosterone pumped. Hopefully the fencing's gonna kick off soon because we've probably got six new fields of fencing to sort, obviously existing fields, but 
some of our fields are just not secure at the moment. Uh, certainly not secure enough to trust that a ram wouldn't jump back into the lamb. So once that fencing's in, then Fred and Samson can have their own field. We might put a few of the weathers in there if we wanted to just simplify things or any other additions. I'm not sure if we'll run the goats in there, but you know, if the girls get on board with my alpaca ideas, I think Jay's pretty keen for an alpaca. She just, uh, she's far more sensible. She'd rather pace it out and get everything ready, which is probably a good idea. We've got to get some better fencing up here as well. And then we want to get those field shelters that we bought in action. Two of those are going to be used out in the fields, I think. So you're going to go for a little rest, Fred? Hey, you can become a bit of an indoor sheep. Right, can I have my bailing twine before you guys choke? You see here, just they've all walked off and come back, but look, the clins have all come back in first. And it's always the South Downs that are holding back over there. But this one? Joe's there, uh, that's her, yeah. Feet problems. Lovely. Sympathising more with pregnancy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she didn't want to stand on them. Yeah. See, she's... What was she doing there? Get out. See how... She, yeah, no. what is that? That's what, exactly what they said. Eggshells, like, check the hooves. They said, and then give yeah. us some... Yeah. Well, we're learning, aren't we? But, yeah. And she's the biggest, isn't she? She's one of the biggest. Uh, but I have noticed that Fluffy Buffy, who looks like she's one of the... Well, probably the biggest. Her back feet are a little bit swollen as well, so... I don't, I don't think they are. I don't think that's something that needs to be trimmed. I remember when we bought the goats, Heber, who's the breeder, he said, at least these ones have got handles and I can get what he needs. Imagine doing this with uh, nothing to hold on to. Yeah, you're right, with the sheep you have something called a turnover crate. They're so getting it and you spin them. But we have to do these a bit like horses. Right, we're going to try and do the front feet of this one, the one that's a bit unwell. We're working our way through them, taking it in turns. It's like, do you either get backache, back ache, or, or do you get out. horns in your crotch? Um, I've had both now. Yeah. <laughs> let's do her. In theory, these farm videos shouldn't need as much editing today. No. Are you right to horn her? Yeah. You've definitely got her horns. <laughs> I don't want to be a blooper. <laughs> Something else that happened last night, which you will probably all find amusing, is this. Footprints, evidence. The question is, what was at large last night? Well, here's a little look at our security camera up by the gate. It's very fortunate that Joe's sister's moved in just around the corner from the farm. So I sent them on a little evening errand to sort that out. All it was is the gate that was open. They couldn't have got anywhere, but it just meant they weren't roaming around the barns. I've been keeping them off the bottom meadow because gets really soft underfoot down here it's good to rest the ground anyway but at the moment it's hard it's frozen so there is grass down here it's not a bad thing for them to come down and have a bite but I'd rather they're just up there at where I know where they, where I know where they are Shh. come come by good girl up, up. Ah. good girl good girl Wait, here. Go on, girls. Here. Back. Here. That'll do. Maggie. Maggie.
they're all going to want to go back up into the hill field, but I've shut that off because the pigs are getting out. Joe and I have finished getting the kidding pens ready and cleaned out. I've just spoken to the vet. Well, spoken to the office and the vet's going to give me a call in a minute and either come out or just uh, talk things through on the phone. We'll leave them to it. We've put them through enough stress with our hoof trimming shenanigans already. Some good guesses on last week's video. I think 12 was the most popular guess for how many kids there'll be. Uh, I think one of them, I've got the feeling we're going to end up with one set of three or even four. 11 is what I'm hoping for. Anyway, we'll see. Maggie in the car. Minimal chores done, but enough for a Monday morning. We'll be back later because I want to sort out a few other bits. Pop down for a cup of tea and do a bit of editing. Camera's already gone. Can't have left the gate open again, can I? Unbelievable. Vet's on the way too. We're going to get that goat sorted, hopefully. I just don't understand. How can 25 sheep, fully grown sheep, disappear like that? Oh, there they are. This has turned into a bumper episode, isn't it? We might actually be able to sort out a little issue here because we had to get the rams in and they kind of got themselves into the pen now. So can we do a bit of a sorting gate here? One. Boys at the back, boys at the back, boys at the back. Where are you, boys? No, you're not a boy. Where's Fred? Yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Come on, then. Come on, then. Whoa. Whoa. Steady. Come on, then. Come on, then. Oh, you're staying. You're staying. You stay there. That leaves us four. Two boys, two girls. Let's get them in a pen and then lose the girls. I'll wrestle the two girls out later. At least we know the boys are in, so I'm gonna let the lambs back up from the lake now. I'll take the dog down. That's going to be about 45 minutes, so it gives me time to get down, turn off the solar charger, I'll bring that up, put it on the pigs temporarily, and you can come and enjoy the walk with me. And the rabbits. Lots of rabbits. Come on! Good girl. Go on. Go on. Hello. Okay, that's fine, we should be here anyway. All right, thanks very much, cheers. We just got, we just got knocked down the list. That's gone to a carving, so hopefully he's still gonna make it whilst it's light. This brook has been kind of up and down over the past four to six weeks. There have been times where it's come up just crept out onto the grass, but nothing much. But I mean, look at the levels. It's almost impossible to believe that that comes up this high. It's probably uh, three meters, I reckon, I guess, up to here. Steady. Oh. So a three meter rise in levels is what it takes to come out here. And it does. Um, I've been walking along with the dog along here and it just comes down here, the velocity of it as well, it really picks up pace. And you can see, I think this is probably collapsed in. Some of those banks there, just shows how quickly that the erosion can happen. And what's more is while we've cleared out some bits of rubbish and things like that, more and more comes down. Because if it's coming down at pace, it will just bring everything, you know. So this is a good example here where a small fallen tree was in there and this elder that's been growing up 
and it just catches everything. And then it catches the big stuff, then it catches the smaller stuff, then the leaves, then that just turns into basically a sieve. Then it starts picking up the silt and it all just backs up and up. So I, I'm not going to just clear cut it all and make it into a you know, fast running river. The idea is to slow things down. Here again, there's a fallen tree there. Things have mounded up a bit. A little wren. So it's not all about making it, you know, clean and perfectly trim. We want the bits to slow it down. We want the bends, but we don't want it to gather rubbish, if that makes sense, or just unnecessarily build up and flood our bit. We want these flood meadows to flood. There's nothing wrong with flooding when it's controlled and when it's not damaging property. We keep the livestock off here um, this time of year. So the five acres that side, the four or five this side can benefit from that because flooding brings nutrients. You know, you talk about soil erosion, running up and run off of everyone else's land further upstream. Well, there's quite a lot of goodness in all that topsoil and stuff. Um, so we don't mind having a bit of that. So we benefit from it and we've, when Ben came over back in the summer and we dug some test sample spots along here, the fertility, I think he graded it as an eight out of 10, you know, it was great. Everything was going right in the right way. So that flooding has probably helped that over the years. So the last thing we want to do is you know, lose that fertility on tap, basically. Sorry, lammies, no food today. You gotta to work for it and go and find your mums. Steady. The water is not defrosted one bit yet. Frozen solid. Looks like someone's jumped over here. Let's turn it off. See it's flashing red, or it's red. It's not charging well. Which I guess is to be expected. But it'd be nice to know it ran through the winter. It still goes out a hell of a shock. Just not, uh, uh, the frequency is just low. It's like a pulse every three or four seconds. So I might take the battery out of here, put it on charge overnight. Come on then. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, forty, fifty, seventeen, eighteen with a limp. Hopefully that's got enough of a zap in it. Yep. Good to hear, good to hear. Here's a little look at Lily, who we had the vet out for yesterday. You can see she just doesn't want to stand on those back feet. And that they're kind of turned up. She's sitting right back on her ankles, which just looks completely bizarre. It looks like her hooves are really overgrown, but they're not. The general consensus now, she's had some Metacam and antibiotics just in case there's any sort of infection down there, but thinking it's actually to do with all the tendons. So the whole back end kind of slackens off before pregnancy, uh, before kidding. And therefore it might be that just all of those tendons in her legs and ankles have almost over loosened and she's not able to, to hold them like they should be. Which sounds a bit bizarre, but we're gonna keep an eye on her. She's got one more jab to have tomorrow in Metacam, which the vet left me. Hopefully she's gonna have plenty of energy for kidding next week. That's the main concern, but she's eating, walking a little bit and drinking. So she's not happy on that foot there. Yeah. So I've come back down. It's been uh, three or four days since the vet came and things haven't really changed. She's had a second jab today. 
just the Metacam, that's just the information in her feet. So I think I'm slowly kind of putting the pieces of the jigsaw together. She's moaning and groaning, grinding her teeth. She's obviously in discomfort. I think what it is, is her feet are hurting. So she's wanting to lie down. So she's wanting to lie down, but because she's lying down for 23 hours a day, she's bloating up. And I, I, that's what I'm thinking it is. So the moaning and groaning and the teeth grinding and the general discomfort is a little bit to do with the feet, but I think she's bloating up because she's not walking around. So what I've been watching on the webcam this evening, it always sounds worse when you're not actually there in person, but it's constant, you know, she's obviously constantly moaning and groaning. And she's not getting up because she doesn't know how to help herself. So I've come over just to get her up, walk her around and see if that'll help it. Maybe massage her side a bit. Um, I know people talk about you can use like a an oil, even cooking oil, just kind of loosen things up. Or some way of neutralising all those gases. But I'm hoping that she'll just expel them naturally. And then I'm thinking maybe tomorrow I'll just try and keep them mainly on hay and a little bit of the basic dry food, nothing too rich. But she is moving around, so that's a good sign. And you can see the kids in her bumping away. And I think, well, I can't really tell, but I think she is putting more weight on those back feet, so there's been some improvement. She's grinding her teeth as well. on instagram head over and we'll probably put some more updates on the goats on their live and also on the poorly goat just to make sure she's back on form ready for the big day anyway take care everyone and we will see you next time